You've always been quite ahead with your technology, going back to, in fact, the uh, patent for Axminster from yeah. the 19th century. That was yours, wasn't it? Exactly, yeah. And we've got, we've got an incredible archive um, with over 100,000 designs. Yes, and before we come to Shahzad, just to say that we're talking about newness and technology, um, but in fact, uh, you're in Kidderminster, you're still in Kidderminster, uh, and the reason for that, I understand, is that uh, you have your sheep, and you have your valleys, and you have moisture. And that is why the, the carpet industry comes from Kidderminster, um, which is very much part of the process, and that the dyeing is affected by that as well. It's all fascinating to look at the old and then the new technology. So, um, Shazad, maybe you can talk a little bit about Outset and, and how you met and, um, and the, the, the collaboration there and who Outset are and, and why they put you together. Uh, well, Outset uh, is a foundation for contemporary art and they support artists' projects and collaborations and I've done uh, quite a bit of work with them in the past and Candida Gertler, who runs Outset, called me one day out of the blue and just said, um, you know, if you're not interested, don't worry about it, but you aren't at all interested in carpets, are you? And, uh, you know, I said, well, actually, I, you, and I, and, you know, she knows, she's been to my studio. I, I collect textiles and carpets. Um, I have quite a, quite a kind of crazy collection. In fact, I had to recently, well, a few years ago, get an overspill storage for all my carpets and textiles. And I'd been wanting to do carpets for about, you know, I've been interested in tapestries and looms and wanting to actually do something with them for about two, three years. So when she called, I said, hmm, okay, uh, let's let's talk. And then, you know, progressed to a meeting with, with Emma and um, and various other members of the team at Caro. And, um, and when they said you can do 32 colors, you know, I was trying not to look like a kid in a candy shop. Because in a way, one of the reasons that I'd been a little bit, I'd done some initial research um, prior to the phone call and the 10 to 12 colors, I was kind of like, ah. you know, the, I felt a little bit straitjacketed by that limitation. And when they said 32, I mean, that was, you know, going from naught to 60. Yeah, um, but, but of course, Brinton, though, is very, very well known for the commercial, your commercial work. And in fact, the, the lovely uh, sheds outside uh, by Shaw Studio Architect. There's a lovely little installation there for Clark and Mill Design Week. Inside, you have the carpets that are called something quick weave yeah. because in fact from from ordering to delivery is only six weeks no matter the size or scale and Brinton's you do things for yachts and hotels and lots of hospitality so you have that arm to it clearly the commercial arm yeah. and then and then this kind of collaboration as well so um, it's not surprising actually that you, you were uh, impressed with this possibility of the 32 colors and they were probably waiting for someone like you to come along to, to use that technology properly. The archive was fantastic, but one of the reasons I've always been interested in Axminster and in textiles more generally is in a way that they bridge the past and the present, you know, or even the future. I spent a good long day in the archive uh, with Yvonne, who's wonderfully, wonderfully erudite and bonkers um, at Brinton's, and the earliest they still have Axminster designs from 1783 and those are done on a grid those designs look incredibly incredibly digital and so for me that was a great inspiration to go and start to kind of mine my own archive both of different uh, textiles and of different imagery and whether it was sort of filmed or photographed imagery or even kind of little designs and um, small sort of painted designs for paintings that I'd never realized and this was a great opportunity I mean interestingly the the main piece called Avery Rock there's actually I've done a painting that's about two-thirds the size of that and I thought and actually I've never shown it because I thought this needs to be a carpet so that was an easy you know although it's the biggest one and in some ways the, you know very complicated it was the first obvious one to kind of throw into the mix there was also this space presented to us to work with, and I was quite interested in how you create walls within, wall, you know, just to kind of give some sort of our inner interior architecture to the space. Well, of course, um, carpets were originally hung on walls, and the Dukes of Burgundy used to have their carpets hung in their tent tents when on campaign to keep the warmth in. I mean, it is a great tradition for changing architecture and for keeping the warmth in. It's been really nice to see how uh, people have been interacting with the pieces. 
um, and I think it's um, it will be nice to continue to collaborate with artists and do do different things and push the boundaries and see where that takes us. We're uh, we're a worldwide brand, so um, we're I think you know maybe collaborating with people from all over the world could could be really interesting. Um, and again, just just um, kind of changing. Um, what people think about carpets and, and what you can do. Each project that we work on is brings something new to the table and is a completely new brief. So we're designing bespoke carpets every day. Um, and uh, we have a team of designers um, throughout the world. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we're, cr we're creating uh, carpets for different spaces, for um, for yachts, for aircrafts, for uh, hotels, um, and in each, you, you need to think about how the carpet is going to be positioned and, and where it's going to end up as well. Um, you need to think about the whole picture um, when you're designing. I think because there was a real a mutually kind of respectful approach to this project, which is also rare. I mean, I get approached for some things where you just think, you know, you just, the, the initial email or phone call is a car crash in, in, in waiting. And, and this was kind of quite the opposite. And there was a real understanding um, of where I was coming from and what, you know, what, we, what we both needed to kind of maintain from the project. So we spent some quality time playing with colour and um, yeah, it was a really nice process. I think you've got to, going back to your question about where you place the design, you've got to be really sensitive about where, you, where you're putting different types of designs. You need to really think about the space and if it's appropriate for surroundings as well, so I think you would be yeah. And of course weaving is the most ancient art form in the world. Um, when we stopped being cave dwellers, we became lake dwellers and we caught our fish by weaving nets, so it really is the most ancient, apart from the weaponry and flints and things like that and stones, um, art form in the world and there's something rather magical about that. Yeah, and I think it's really nice as well because um, back then every piece of carpet told a really beautiful story. Um, even the kind of the Berber, the Berber carpets, they have the patterns um, are, a, are a reflection on the, on the tribe that they're woven in. And, and, and what's really beautiful about these pieces is that you can continue to tell stories on, but, but in a different way. Um, but the, that's the, the beauty of carpet is, is, is it's a really nice way to tell a story.